Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne, and today I'll be covering this NZXT H440 mid tower PC case with Razer design. So, this should definitely please those Razer fans out there. Here's a look at the accessories that come in the box. We're going to start off with the documentation first. And here we have a couple Razer stickers, which is not something I typically see inside of case accessories. Now then, we have also an NZXT guide to their other wonderful products. As you can see, some more cases in here. They have a lovely Phantom series. And next up is the user guide. Um, if you don't know how to install everything, they have an excellent picture guide in here telling you where to uh, open up everything and install everything. And next up is this bouquet of twist ties. How romantic. <laughs> and here is a single standoff with, I believe, a standoff tool, an NZXT case badge, and finally, some packets of mounting hardware. Let's take a look at the materials of the case first, and I love that most of this case is made of metal with a bit of plastic, but you know, nothing's perfect. <laughs> also, you'll notice that the finish, well at least me, it looks sandblasted, but do not quote me on that. And not only does it look great as a matte finish, but it doesn't really attract fingerprints. You'll notice that, yeah, you'll see a little bit, but it kind of just absorbs it or something. It's like magic. <laughs> All right, now let's go over the dimension, shall we? So this case measures 220 millimeters or 8.6 inches wide, 510 millimeters or 20 inches tall, and 475 millimeters or 18.7 inches deep, and it weighs in at 10.3 kilograms or 22.7 pounds, which is actually a little heavier than the original H440 or the special edition one that I went over. Now let's go ahead and pop open this front panel right here so I can show you what's inside. So to avoid the awkwardness of me struggling to get this panel off because it's on there pretty tightly, which is not a bad thing, of course, it just means it's more stable, uh, I already have it removed. Now, here is a logo. This will light up, and I'll show you in the LED demo in just a bit. And make sure when you remove it to be careful because the LED connector is connected to the front panel. And actually on this side, there is some sound dampening material. This case is definitely more for silence. And if you're wondering where the front air intake comes from, you do get some ventilation holes on this edge of the front panel. This is quite heavy, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> now moving right along on the inside, there is a magnetic, of course, removable dust filter. And you know how exciting that is to me. Ah. Alrighty, <laughs> on the inside, this is not something I see a lot, but they have included for you three 120 millimeter FN V2 fans. And there's another one in the rear too. But that's a lot of fans that they've included. And if you don't wish to have these and want to install different fans or something like that, you can go ahead and install either two 140 millimeter fans or three 120 millimeter fans, and you get radiator support of up to 280 millimeter or 360 millimeters in length. So, you know, check out those Crocken X40 and X60 radiators if you're curious. On this side of the case, you get a nice slice of tinted window, so you can go ahead and check out your internal LEDs and a little bit of your components, but it's a little bit dark. <laughs> anyway, and you'll notice that the window does not stretch to this side because this is where your hard drive bays are. And, well, there is a hard drive panel already, but still, this is more aesthetically pleasing. Now then, let's move on to the rear of the case. Here's a look at the rear of the case, and you'll notice at the top panel area, you get some ventilation holes along this edge and this edge. This is so you get some airflow for the fans or radiator that you might install up there. Now, in this area is a pre-installed 140 millimeter FN V2 fan, and you get a mounting point for a 120 millimeter fan. You also get these kind of longer slotted mounts. This is so you can go ahead and orient your fan higher or lower, depending on which direction of airflow you would like. And that is definitely something I'm starting to see on more cases these days, so that's a plus. And this is an exhaust fan, and the front fans are intakes. Uh, sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. And next to that is a knockout for your IO shield of your motherboard. And there are a couple LEDs that will illuminate the back panel here so that you can go ahead and plug and unplug something in the, if you're in a dark room, maybe at an event. And above that is the uh, LED on off button. 
And below that, you get seven expansion slots. You can go ahead and do multi-card setups if you'd like. And next to that, you get a couple grommets to go ahead and thread your cables through or your water cooling tubes. And finally, on the bottom, you get a power supply mount. And you'll notice this retention bracket here. Just remove these four screws, attach the bracket to your power supply, and slide your power supply back in. And there is a dust filter, very cool. Let's go ahead and move it to this side panel. It's just a very clean looking panel. At the top of the case, there's a power button and a ring around it that will light up green and a small reset button so you won't easily hit it. <laughs> now, next to that, or below that, I suppose, get your headphone, microphone jacks, two USB 3.0 ports, and this is a really nice touch. These are in green. How cool is that? Usually they're in blue. And below that, two USB 2.0 ports. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this top panel once again. It's going to have to be in a different shot because it's really on there. So if you're having little trouble removing the top panel, go ahead and open up the case panel and then pop out these nubs from the inside. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's behind this panel. You get more of this soft and a foam sound dampening material. I do like that. It's, uh, it's not super dense, but it's, it's dense enough. And also very heavy as there's metal up top here. And here are the mounting points. You can go ahead and install two 140 millimeter fans or three 120 millimeter fans, and you get a radiator support of up to 280 millimeters or 360 millimeters in length, just like the front. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the case. You do get these raised feet and you get rubber padding on each of the feet. This is to help improve the airflow as well as help reduce vibration. And down here, there are plenty of ventilation holes for where your power supply sits. And you can also install a 3.5 inch drive on the bottom of the case or a 2.5 inch drive. I'm going to remove the right side panel first. And something to note is that these thumb screws are captive. That means they don't come off. And what's great about that is you don't lose them. Yay. <laughs> and the side panel just slides out like so. Not the hinge design, but this is cool too. And on the other side, you get plenty of this noise reducing material. Once again, this is meant to be a quiet case. On the inside, you get plenty of room for cable management. You get between 17.7 millimeters to 32.5 millimeters. And as for motherboard compatibility, it's compatible with mini ATX, micro ATX, and ATX motherboards. In this section, you get this kind of trapezoid shaped very large cutout for your aftermarket heatsink, easy for you to swap your coolers in and out. And you also get plenty of tie down points as well as rubber grommets, thick grommets to thread your cables through and keep them nice and tidy. Here's a closer look at the fan hub on the right side of the case. And four of the case fans have already been plugged in. It can house up to 10 fans. You can see there are still six of them that are free for you to go ahead and plug in something. Next to the fan hub, you get five 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch drive caddies. I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of them. And these are, like I said, also captive screws. So they will stay on here. And go ahead and just remove the drive tray just like this. And you'll notice that this is also metal. There's just so much metal in this case, it's amazing. <laughs> and you get all five of them that are like that as well, and the power supply shroud on the other side is also made of metal. Now let me go ahead and go over some of the front panel connectors. This is your 20-pin USB 3.0 header, and then, of course, you get your power reset and LED connectors. And then here is HD audio, and here is the Molex plug that powers the fan hub as well as the LEDs. And this little guy, this is the USB 2.0 connector. I've already removed the left side panel, so let's see what's on the other side. They have included next to the slice window some more sound blocking material. Very nice. They have all their bases covered. On the inside, 
you do get this metal hard drive panel that I told you about earlier. Not sure why they didn't extend the window since this part was blocking the hard drive trays anyway, but moving right along, here's another look at the 148 millimeter rear exhaust fan right there. And let's go ahead and move it on downwards. Over here, you get mounting points for two 2.5 inch drives. Go ahead and load up your SSDs. We can go ahead and remove them. It's very easy. Just so just take off this screw and just slide down. And here is your 2.5 inch drive mount. Also metal. Some quality parts in this case here, folks. And below that is your power supply shroud. And here is the Razer logo and it lights up. And now for a look at the clearance of this case, as I'm sure you are curious. So we'll start off with the CPU cooler height clearance. It is up to 180 millimeters or seven inches. As to graphics card clearance, you can install one of up to 294 millimeters or 11.5 inches with the hard drive trays in place or 406 millimeters or 15.9 inches without the hard drive trays. Here's a look at the case LEDs and the button at the rear here will turn all of the LEDs on and off. And here are the two IO LEDs that I told you about that help light up this area. And here's a look at the logo that lights up on the power supply shroud as well as the base lighting of this case. Very cool. Kind of reminds me of some mice with base lighting, but anyway. So here it is off and on. Last but not least is the front razor logo, as well as a better look at the base lighting. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the NZXT H440. This is a special edition black and blue color and the Razer edition sitting right next to it. And from what I can see, the original version has this uh, matte black finish, but as you can tell, there are some fingerprints on there, but the Razer edition has more of a grainy look to it. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison of the two cases. The Razer Edition has a really tinted window now that I see it in comparison to the original window, which is just clear. So that is a nice touch, unless you want to see your components, then you might want to get the other version. <laughs> anyway, um, so aside from the finish of the case and the design of the you know Razer logos and the lighting, I would say most of the other features are pretty similar, if not the same. Here's a look at the pros and cons of this case. So what I like about it, well, all that metal, love it. I mean, just quality right there. And for Razer fans, it's Razer themed. Nothing else needs to be said. <laughs> also the LEDs for the logos, the underglow, and the IO area are definitely a welcome addition, but you know, the other one also lit up, but I'm just saying that's definitely a perk. And you also get four included fans, which is a lot, and tons of water cooling support at the top in front of the case, up to 280 millimeters or 360 millimeters just to uh, rehash. And there's a tinted side panel window for those of you who prefer a more subtle look to their case and the green USB 3.0 ports are really unique. I don't see that a lot, so that was awesome. And you also get steel drive trays with captive thumb screws. As for the cons, um, no five and a quarter inch drive bay, but uh, a lot of things are done via USB these days, including installing your operating system. So for some of you, it's not a big deal, but for some others, they maybe have some old discs they like to play or they do want to install their OS via disc. So that is definitely a con. And it's Razer themed. So some maybe don't want it to be Razer themed. Maybe they like everything about this case, but they're just like, I just want a black case with red, you know, stripes across or with blues and, you know, just with simple LEDs, something like that. Um, and uh, if you are looking for a different variant, of course, I did see black and orange and black and red versions out there. So go ahead and check those out. Also the LED on the PSU shroud, I think could be larger so that it could be brighter, especially with the tinted window. Uh, just, I would like to see the LED more. And one more thing is, would have liked to see a fan speed controller. I mean, it would have been nice, especially since there's a fan hub, so just saying. If you're looking for some cool gaming peripherals to go with your new Razer Edition NZXT H440 case, then please check out the Razer Deathstalker gaming keyboard, the Razer Taipan gaming mouse, and the Razer Goliathus gaming mouse mat. And it is ginormous because it's for both your keyboard and your mouse.
That wraps up this look at the NZXT H440 Mint Tower PC case with Razer Design. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media, Joanne Tech Lover Facebook fan page, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, please don't forget to hit the donate button so you can help expand this channel and feed this techie. One last thing is storeenvy.com where you can go ahead and purchase my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints. And also be sure to check out the new Diablo Wizard prints that are up already. Bye bye! <laughs>